You're listening to the Royal Bride Godmother Podcast, the podcast that's dedicated to serving and providing you with your daily hot coal and your sweet honey roll, so you can come out of the valley of dry bones and rise from the ashes to ride on the wings of the spirit. I am Rima Grace, minister, etiquette, and life coach specialized in narcissistic abuse, complex PTSD, faith, self-love, femininity, empowerment, and self-growth. And today we are going to continue with our special and new series, The Narcissist and Your Spirit. This is episode six, where we will explore more beneath the surface of that iceberg. So before we begin, ladies, please share, share, share. Sharing is caring. If you know of somebody who may be dealing with a narcissist, this is the time to share, share, share. Share the hot rolls, share the hot coals, praise God. Now, also before we begin, make sure that this episode is going to be a bit more personal than other episodes. And so make sure you're wearing those earphones or children are not within your, um, within earshot of this talk because As promised, I will be delivering the darker side of narcissistic abuse today. That is a physical intimacy with the narcissist. So before we begin, I will allow you a moment to make sure that you are alone. Close your doors, put on those earbuds while you're listening to this. It's very important, the Spirit says, to protect the ears of our children. Listen, I have a sister who did this with me ever since I was little, and I am so grateful for that even today. She protected me from watching and hearing things that I I would have... what, What has been seen cannot be unseen, and when a child hears things they should not hear, you don't want to do that to your children early on. So let's begin. Let's begin. First of all, let me thank you all for joy. Thank, thank you all for joining me. Thank you. Just thank you. It's, it's so wonderful to have you all on board, to have you coming in. I pray that this message tonight blesses so many. I keep you all in my prayers. I praise God for each and every one of you listening. Like I said, this is a topic that I was not thinking of ever speaking on ever again. But we go through things, the Lord says. We go through things. We come out stronger and mightier in order to help those who are still in the trenches. So I praise God for my past experiences and everything that I had to go through in order to bring me to this moment. So let's begin without further ado, ladies, the sadistic sexual side of the narcissist. We'll talk about that and talk more in depth about intermittent reinforcement. We covered the tip of the iceberg for trauma bond and intermittent reinforcement. So let me ask you a question, ladies, do you believe that you may be trapped with a sexual narcissist? Or that somebody you know may be trapped with a sexual narcissist, a friend perhaps. First off, I want to cover the, let's talk about what we mean when we say sex. This isn't just the physical act. This also includes sexting to virtual sex to everything in between all of that. It all applies and you will see how as we continue on this show. So why do narcissists use sex to control you and how they how do they do it? Well, it plays into what we discussed in our past episode, that trauma bond. It's all a plan, how they trauma bond you. We said that trauma bond is an alternation of pleasant experiences, right? And abuse that's used over time by the abuser. And it is designed to confuse you, to latch you on tighter to your abuser. I personally call it the release of the black goo, which bonds you to the narcissist. Now, I like what psychotherapist Julia Kidd, um, it, she broke it down into four elements of trauma bond, what trauma bonding is. So comprising four elements. First off, she says it's a compulsion to repeatedly return to a traumatic situation or relationship. And we covered in our previous episode, I gave an example in fiction, uh, Beauty and the Beast, and in that one film, La Belle y la Bestia, where Belle continues to, she runs away and she comes back, runs away and comes back. Very typical uh, um, for this to happen um, in abusive relationships. So Let's look at these four elements. Number one, intense emotional experience with an abuser over time. The, it's all about the emotions. They have to get you hooked 
on the emotions first off. You remember that Mariah Carey song, Emotions? Yeah, something like that. So intense emotional experience. And it, it is intermittent. It is over time, which leads to number two, to the victim depending on her abuser for fuel or sustenance of, of some kind. So... Remember when we said that the narcissist needs fuel, he needs, uh, he needs supply. Well, victims also at the beginning, especially at the beginning of the relationship, this is when you're getting all doped up and we'll go, we'll, 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 we'll explore dopamine, um, later on in, in this episode. Uh, you're completely on cloud nine and you're depending, you have that emotional high with your abuser. So you are depending on that emotional high in order to, survive, especially if you are a codependent. So and and this is how the trauma bond keeps building, keeps building, keeps getting tighter. And then number three, inconsistent behavior from the abuser, cruel to kind. And in last episode, we did talk about again, how the beast in Beauty and the Beast goes from cruel to kind to cruel to kind, confusing, confusing Belle. And there's even a, there's even a scene in the movie where she 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 ex- she verbalizes it. she verbalizes it she she expresses it she says you do all these you do all these bad things and i'm paraphrasing her you do all these bad things but then you do this one nice thing i'm so it, she's confused and yes it's meant to confuse you these random acts of uh, of kindness uh, so cruel to kind and then number 4 a promise of a reward we spoke about the German Shepherd example where the animal psychologist punched the dog a couple times to teach her not to bite him. And then he alternated this violence with petting her and saying, good doggy, good doggy, remember that? And that was her reward for not biting him, as he said. So that promise of a reward, all this comprises the four elements of trauma bonding. Now, let's go a little deeper. In the victim's case... So the victim may look back and remember the past as if she's looking into a mirror, recalling the good times, those gr- the good old days, the positive encounters with her abuser, which can also lead to abuse amnesia. The more you dwell on the positive encounters, the less you remember of all of the abuse that he's, pu- he's already put you through. And keep in mind that When she begins to forget the abuse because of what she remembers, this is just ostensible, ostensible good moments. They're they're really not, really, if you think about it, they're not that great. It's just that because you've been so doped up on the dopamine and this intermittent reinforcement and you're so confused in in your, your stewing in the black goo, like I said, you, you, you convince yourself that they were indeed the the good moments. And, and you know what? Narcissists, they make sure they deliver quantity at first only because later on they get lazy. Once they get lazy and they, after they grow bored of you, it, it, they start looking for new supply. They really don't, they really don't deliver quantity anymore. They breadcrumb you and they have to start looking. It's inevitable. They start looking for new supply because this is how they need to, well, attempt to fill their black hole needs, their black holes. But if the victim is remembering to occasionally check that mirror and fawning and fawning and ruminating over the good old days, then chances are she will continue to engage in this behavior for a long time and she will stay in the situation even if she rarely receives the rewards. And I want to mention this. There's a fascinating study with lab rats where, and some, maybe some of you have already read it, maybe some of you have already heard of it, where the mice, are, they, they were trained to, to press a bar to receive p- food pellets. When even when the food is not being released. Now, I'm going to post a link in the description of this episode because knowledge is key, my queens. Knowledge is key. So just like a little lab rat, you're likely to keep pressing the bar in hopes that the reward will come. The proverbial carrot dangling. And so narcs, they they enjoy dangling that carrot before their victims. And you better be sure that as soon as you're close to meeting the goal, they change the goalposts on you each and every time. So from physical intercourse to sexting to virtual sex, it all plays a part into the trauma bond. And they use sex to control their victims. Emotional dependence 
begins with the love bombing. It, it starts at the beginning. And here's where they shower you with that ecstatic attention. And I'm using ecstatic attention because that is exactly the way that my abuser put it. He called it when he began to gradually thin out the reinforcement. And to top it off, he was a psych major. So he, he claimed that he knew exactly how humans work. And boy, did I not pay attention, but I'm paying attention now. Continuous reinforcement is to obtain your favors, your trust, and your loyalty to them. So, all right, let's go a little deeper. Now, rapport. They must build and deepen rapport with you to gain your trust. And I'm, we're going to do some math here. No, no, nobody panic. It's easy math. All that's needed is this equation, ladies. Take out your blue pens. Write this down. Time plus Numerous encounters plus pleasant interactions equals deep narc rapport. Whew. <laughs> Time plus numerous encounters plus pleasant interactions equals deep narc rapport. So let's, let's examine this equation. Time. You know, narcissists usually don't put a lot of time into these things. It's usually about three to six months, maybe a year if he's relentless, maybe two, who knows. But with narcs, you never know. Three to six months is the usual, uh, is the usual time. It's usually, it usually falls on the three or six month dot, which means, you know, when you, that the start of the relationship, they're clocking in lots of time. They must, they must, because this is how, this is how they, they seduce you. Um, and, and so that, that extra time that they're clocking in where they're blub bombing you, they're bum, 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 bombing you with all of this attention and all this ecstatic attention. Uh, this leads us to those numerous encounters. They must consist of quality. But narcissists know that quality and quantity must be balanced out. They must be equalized. So no less of quality than quantity. So those encounters must comprise quality. Pleasant interactions will then be spaced out repeatedly with that intermittent reinforcement. So think of it this way. Let's think of it this way. We have the narcissist. He's the provider. And the victim is the receiver. They interact They interact over a period of weeks or months. Like I said, n most narcissists are lazy. They will reach for the low-hanging fruit. They do not want to reach for the, for the top at all. So they're, they're only going to invest a certain amount of time. Um, and this is how they're calibrating. They're calibrating everything. They're very calculating individuals. So... There's that interaction of a period over a period of weeks or months. That's the spaced repetition that for the most part is going to result in pleasant, satisfying interactions. That's the intermittent reinforcement. Now, this develops a pattern of exposure contact to a situation and a reward. Remember the German Shepherd example. Now, let's begin to touch deeper beneath the surface of this sinister iceberg to deepen the rapport, the provider the narcissist, must feign a genuine interest in the victim. Feign, fake, 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 all right? Fake that genuine interest in the victim. Love bombing, through that love bombing, by expressing, by leaning in, by learning more about you, right? The victim, about me, who was the victim. We're survivors. We're survivors, baby. We are the champions. All right, let's keep going. So they will bomb you. When it comes to the love bombing, they will bomb you with questions as well. What, that's where they throw in all of the questions. What you, what you think they're showing you genuine interest, but it's intended to build deeper rapport and gain your trust levels. And it may not seem like it, but the entire time they are calculating, they are calibrating to see what will work on you. They must do this. They must do this in order to, to, to know how much power they can gain on you. So think of it, think of it as testing your temperature. This is also a very sick and twisted uh, method that pickup artists use. They test your temperature. So the emphasis is upon the provider or the narcissist making the effort to gauge, but to better gauge the victim, to better gauge her fears, her traumas. They will delve into childhood traumas. They ask a lot of questions. Beware of the, of the, of the curious ones. Um, the likes and dislikes. It is not, and it, it's not about the victim understanding the provider. It's not about you understanding them. 
Which the more I think about it, the scarier of a notion it is. Because here we are revealing intimate details to somebody we don't even suspect is taking acute note of every single thing that we are saying in order to use it against us and to control us when you think you're building genuine rapport. And here's where they T-1000 you. Oh, they T-1000 you. So as they're listening carefully, they're taking notes. They're taking their notes. And especially if they're psych majors, you best believe they're taking notes. So if this is through text, if a lot of the interaction is through text, which is typical in these days, they have this stuff down in writing to refer to their narc notes. See what I did there? <laughs> to help them along the way. They listen. They read carefully. They read you. They, they're, they're, they're gauging your manner of speaking, what you're texting them, the tone, the undertone. Everything matters. Detail matters. They are highly calculating individuals and many, listen to me, listen closely, the Spirit's saying, many are backed by demonic entities. Because remember Saul in, 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 uh, in the Bible, how the Lord sent a spirit to trouble Saul? Yes. They have demonic entities who are oppressing them. And when you get in touch with a narcissist, you're sharing in that. So the T-1000 moment hits where they begin to slightly reflect. And this must be done slightly. This must be done with subtlety. This isn't like Robert Patrick in, in Terminator. By the way, I had a math teacher who looked a lot like Robert Patrick. Why am I, why am I deviating? <laughs> okay. Um, where they begin to slightly reflect some of the characteristics they note about you. Oh, I'm reminded of Silence of the Lambs where Hannibal is all about the quid pro quo, Clarice. Quid pro quo. Oh, Sir Anthony Hopkins. Don't you love him? Okay, so let's draw from my own experience because like I said, uh, I can only speak from my own personal experience. Now, in my, in my experience, we started texting. Um, one of the first things that I said at the very beginning was that I did not approve of any sexual in, in any sexual talk because he had started to to want to test my temperature. I wish I still had those messages. Um, he started to want to test my temperature to see how far he could go with the talk with sexual talk. Now he refer, I I checked him. And then he refrained from this behavior. But later on, he went back to it again. He, he, he would, he, later on, as he devalued me, he went back to throwing the sexual references at me again. And this was at the very beginning. Another thing that I noticed that, you know, it, he began, he was using, he was using a lot of LOLs and emojis with me younger than me. So he was using the LOLs and emojis with me and I was, I wasn't using them because I didn't even know him. I, I only use those with my, <laughs> with people that I'm very, very, very close to. So he noticed that I didn't use these because then he wasn't sending them. No LOLs, no emojis. He used the serious tone like I was using my serious tones. He stopped using them. And like I said, the, the tones and text, uh, uh, that's why people use emojis. This is why we use the LOLs in order to convey a tone, right? In my case, it was just... <laughs> wasn't using anything, but it's interesting to look back and remember how he used them and he used the, the ha ha ha's and all that, but I wasn't using that. And so he began to gauge that. Now, because I did not approve of sexual talk, he pretended to praise me for this. And of course, later he began to devalue me by calling me a prude, which <clears throat> by the way, I am, let me use my affirmations here. I am a prude. Let me say that loud and clear. So everyone Everyone here and on Mars listening to this podcast, Lord, please, <laughs> watching the videos on YouTube, hear me loud and clear. I am a prude, a proud, 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 proud prude. Do you got a problem with that? You can always take it up with my God. And your assumption about my prude behavior is not my problem, right? This is how we set boundaries. But what did I know then? So... This is how they subtly devalue you in the beginning. 
They ridicule your boundaries. They do. This is how they're breaking down your barriers. They by ridiculing your boundaries. It could be something. There was another. There was another person. There was another guy many years ago who made fun of certain things that I that I liked that had nothing to do because he was all about he was all about sex and because I wasn't giving in he wanted to ridicule me for 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 holding back this is what they do now I don't know if this other guy was a narcissist or not but it's interesting to see I think he was more of a pickup artist moving on let's keep going with this so this is extreme subtlety and ladies what did we talk about several episodes ago on this podcast where we spoke about the woman of Yah and we spoke about the, the subtle serpent and the, ingenu- the, the ingenuous daughter, Eve. The subtlety of the serpent and, in, and the ingenuity of Eve. Question for you. What do you get when you cross subtlety with ingenuity? You get narked. You get narked. Mm-hmm. The T-1000 method is actually called mirroring. So this is when they begin to slightly imitate you, which makes it seem you start to feel like they are your soulmate, like they are an extension of you. Interesting. So with narcissist and intermittent reinforcement, it's like a box of chocolates. You know what I mean? You never know what you're going to get, when you're going to get the reward that you seek from them, if you ever get it, or what you will get from them. Now, I want to go into an example that, that's used in the gambling industry. So imagine a, a, a person's hungry and they go to the refrigerator and don't know if that refrigerator is full or empty. Now, when it's full, there's this rush of pleasure chemicals, right? That just, phew, the brain, right? The flood the brain. Now, when it's empty, there's this rush of chemicals that will lead to <laughs> sadness, despair, and disappointment. But because it's sometimes full... There's that impulse to keep going back and checking over and over again. That's what happens. That's what happens. Sometimes you'll get it. They most sometimes you'll get the reward and sometimes you won't. But like a little lab rat, he has trained you to push the bar, to press the bar, to see if this time you'll get the food pellet. Woo! <laughs> Praise God for science. Now, here's no, here's where we're going to dive a little uh, deeper, a little deeper. We're gonna re- really going to start talking about the, the the sexual aspect. Now, again, ladies, if you have children in the room, caution you to put your he- your earphones on, and go into another room. We're going to touch on a few things that that are, I mean, not graphic, but I, I, it, not even the um, just. I, I don't feel like uh, children should be listening to this. This is this is highly um, very mature mature talk. So, when narcs introduce sex, it is only to obtain what they want when they want it from you. What is that? More supply. So suddenly, the talks, the conversations, the phone, the phone conversations, the text messages, the dates are not enough. And as my abuser put it, give me something to fight for, he said. They need something to fight for. And the something is sex. And you know what? They make you feel like you're not enough for not giving it to them. And they will even try to make you feel guilty because you're not giving it to them. Even if you've already engaged in it with them. And if you try to, for whatever reason, you you, you try to pull away from it, they will make you feel guilty. They will say, well, you've done it other times. I don't know why. Now you're being a prude. There you go. There you go. So let's talk about sexting. Highly important to talk about sexting. It begins subtly, of course, um, with... Um, it starts with, with, uh, with, if it's a long distance exchange, the chances are the sexting will be involved. It starts with nudes. Uh, they, at, and at first, then at first they will, uh, they will push the nudes on you. Look, you know, a lot of guys who are not even narcissists will do this. <sighs> Lord have mercy on these men. Um, the nudes, they're pushing the nudes. And when that's not enough, then they, they want to lead, they want to go into uh, virtual virtual sex. So let's talk about dopamine. You're doped up on it. And you're feeling like you're on that cloud nine. I recall feeling that way. 
I, I, I never felt that way. And I recall one specific afternoon feeling like I had been drugged. It was the weirdest thing. It was the weirdest thing. And this is because they've churned out so much of their sticky, black, icky goo that you can't tell your arm from your armpit anymore. See what I did there? <laughs> and it happens within weeks to months. Ladies, remember, narcissists, for the most part, are lazy, even the grandiose ones. Now, this is why I caution you to be very careful when you're meeting someone. Give them at least three months. See if that mask falls. But as a rule of thumb, six months. And as life coach Tony Gaskin says, and I'm paraphrasing this, but I, I, I like how he says that you don't even really know your spouse until at least of being 13 years married to them. So imagine someone you aren't married to that you don't live with. So just be careful. Be careful, ladies. I want to give thanks for all of you tuning in coming this far with me already. Thank you all. Thank you so much for joining me. And I would also like to thank our very special sponsor for allowing us this platform where we can talk, talk, talk about this. So without further ado, we will be back after a brief message. In the 21st century, you cannot afford not to share your knowledge. And on Anchor, everyone gets a platform. Build yours today with the free podcast creator accessible from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and more. Earn money with no minimum listenership. Anchor is all you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm to get started. Build your platform today. All right, all right. So welcome back. Once they're bored of you and that small talk, they, they, they get bored. They will start looking for more creative and degrading ways to get their fix. Degrading to you, not to them. I don't think they, I don't think they know what, what degradation means. I don't think they know what that word... I don't think they know if that's a side dish or, or a main entree or what. So like I said, if it's a long distance exchange, nudes. Nudes, 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 sexting, uh, virtual sex. Now, in person, normal sex, or, um, they will start to introduce unpleasant, unpleasant, unpleasant things. Suffice it to say that sadism is the name of the game, especially the ones who are addicted to things like pornography, which is very common in them. Violence and sadism. And ladies, they will test your boundaries and your temperature before they introduce any of this. They will test it at the very beginning. Mine, my uh, abuser asked me very subtly one day, he asked me, would you let your husband beat you during sex? And then he asked me other disgusting and self-degrading acts. Very, very twisted, very wicked stuff. No, it is not cute. It is not casual. And it is not without purpose that they ask you these questions. They do this to see how much they can get away with. Ooh. Ooh. With the narcissist, every question he or she asks is designed to obtain something for them, namely fuel, supply, pleasures, those carnal pleasures they're slaves to. So depending on the type of narcissist, they will use consistent doses, and this is often daily, of intermittent reinforcement. Once they've buttered you and juiced you up with a deliberate diet that they have concocted and put you on a schedule of intermittent reinforcement, they will begin to slowly thin it out according to their calculations and how much they've calibrated already and how, on how doped up you are on that fine dopamine, which gets you addicted to them. Now, from there, we go into further intimacy, sex, which will release oxytocin, that cuddle love hormone, mm, which causes you to feel more bonded and connected to him, right? And once he in inevitably starts to pull away, which he will, then adrenaline and norepinephrine, <laughs> nore nore these are the chemicals that are released, caused by your stress and your, and your fear of him leaving and dumping you. Yes. And there's also a release of, of, um, of cortisol. And this can cause depression. And you know what? Remember when I said that a friend told me that I could lose my very life? 
slowly but surely, slowly but surely, because chronically elevated, the release of this cortisol can shorten your lifespan because of that, of that depression, that depression, it's coming in, it's coming in, it's coming in. Yes. And you know what? The, these, these chemical activities, they change your brain and you can even develop post-traumatic stress disorder, complex PTSD as well. And it's just such a challenge to let go of the abuser at that point. And because they know this, because they are sons and daughters of darkness, and they're not working alone for the most part, here is where they begin to control you like a marionette. Because they know you are afraid to lose them. And they know that you are afraid for them to leave. Again, you are unable to see all of this from all the, that intermittent black goo. Also, your body's an object to them. As my abuser would often talk to me by referring to my body parts. Mm -hmm. For instance, and I will only say the blank, I will not say the word. How is your blank doing today? Very degrading, very degrading. And you know what? This is designed and meant to decrease your sense of identity because as we explored in the last episode, you already play different roles for them. My abuser implied that I was no more than a showgirl or a prostitute, that he didn't want to share me, but somehow he would still go out of his way to triangulate me. And again, they go about these things in subtle and covert ways, especially those covert narcissists. Someone's ears must be boiling hot right now. So let's continue. I want to wrap this up with a few signs, if, if, signs that it could be happening to you. Focus on the physical rather than the emotional. Like I said, they're treating your body like it's, like it's a playground. There, there's no emotion. The only emotion is coming from you. They have no empathy and no sympathy. They don't, they, 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 they don't, they don't know what that is. So the emotions are coming from you and you're being bombarded, bombarded, bombarded by all of these emotions. And, and that, you know, they have to love bomb you in order to stop you from, from, from thinking because you're getting so flooded with this dopamine. All right. So number two, charming with a catch. I spoke in I think it was a, a couple episodes ago we were talking about charm. Beware of the charming ones. Beware, beware, beware. Not to say that all charming people are bad. They're not. But when it comes to this day and age with charming people, charm, charm, charm is deceitful. Charm can be deceitful. So, and there, with narcissists, the charm comes with a catch. There's always something in it for them. As my abuser would say, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? So number three, forcing you to serve their needs. There comes a point where you're all about supplying them their needs from being their counselor, their therapist, their mother, their life coach, their supporter, their personal cheerleader, their prostitute, their hooker, their showgirl, um, their, their trophy, their, their, their eye candy to show off uh, if they're like very grandiose, like the one in Sleeping with the Enemy. Um, it's all about their needs. It's all about them, 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 them. It's never about you. Never about you. Number four, coercing you into sex acts. Yes, yes. This this is something that can either uh, happen through. Uh, it could, it could, like I said, if it's happening long distance, they can still they can still co coerce you into sending them nudes, or they'll send you nudes, or um, the virtual sex sexting, all those things, and then in person coercing you in many different ways as well, and then also to. The degrading, the degrading, the, 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 they're black holes when it comes to this. They're never, it's never enough with them. It's never enough with them. They're willing to degrade you so much to the point where they will introduce more than one partner into the act. Yes, let's just put it that way. Disgusting. Disgusting. Number five, neglects you after sex. Neglects you after sex. Yes, this does happen and... It, in, in my experience, 
it was right after he got what he wanted, he would degrade me. And he would he would imply that I was just, um, what are the kids call it these days? Uh, uh, one of those, uh, what are those calls? You know, the n- n- late night calls, right? Because he couldn't get something else. He couldn't, he, he couldn't get something, something more. And he had me on the side so that he could, he could call me up whenever he wanted. And, and then after they get what they, they need, they want, they don't care about you. They, as long as they obtain what they want, they're fine. As long as they have supplied themselves with, with fuel, they're fine. And then they will neglect you. And my abuser would imply that I was, that was pretty much all I was, that I was just, uh, 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 he, a prostitute, (laughs) a prostitute. So number six, infidel. And you know what? Let me tell you something. I am not ashamed about all of this. There, There was a point where I internalized it. And it was very painful and it wouldn't even let me live with myself. But I praise God for Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. You hear me? Because if it were not for the Holy Ghost, I would not be here, ladies. I would not be here. So I just want to, I just want to thank God and worship my Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. There is no other, no other. He's the one who got me out of all of it. And it is because of what he did in my life that I am here speaking on it with no shame, with no shame at all, because my past does not define me, ladies, and your past does not define you. Mic drop. All right, let's keep going. Five, neglects you after sex. Six, infidelity and sexual violence. Yes, yes. I did not experience the sexual violence, but the infidelity, it, it, it can happen. It can happen either way, long distance or short distance. They, uh, y- you begin to bore them. You begin to bore them because they're black holes. They're insatiable. You cannot fill them. Don't try. Don't try. Let's talk about you now. Ways to protect yourself from a sexual narcissist. Take a self, uh, take a self inquiry, take a self inquiry. Get, you know, it's so important to get in touch with your emotions. Got to delve deep into yourselves. One of the things that happens at the love bombing stage is that, like I said, they're, they're, they're love bombing you so much that you barely have time to think. You barely have time. They're just at your phone. They're at your job. They're, 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 they're everywhere. They're liking all your, your Instagram photos, your Facebook pictures. They, they keep flooding you so that you don't have time to think about what is going on. So you must take a self inquiry. Get in touch with those emotions. Delve deep into the root of what is causing the hurt on the ins- on the inside of you. And one of the things that narcs do is that they they oh they judge so much. They they don't they don't they, they, in in my experience I remember my abuser would judge me for judging others, but he was the ex- extremely judgmental one, which is interesting. Which is very interesting. They don't see that they do this. I don't think they have much self awareness. So they you know I want you to just drop all judgment and all blame for yourself. God does not condemn you, ladies. God does not condemn you. Do not condemn yourselves. This is where the enemy wants to keep you in that pit, judging yourself and blaming yourself. No, 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 no. Let those thoughts flow. You know, like it, I, I, have a, I have a friend who who's, who would say to me, and she also suffered from narcissistic abuse. She said to me, just look at those thoughts like as if they're floating on the river. Let those thoughts flood as come as they are. Allow your emotions to come up to the surface for what they are as they are. And in order, because, because in order to start setting up your, your boundaries, in order to setting, start setting up pr- protection for yourselves, you have to go deep into what's wrong and, and, and how you're feeling. This is about you. So give yourself this, this is an equation, time plus space plus freedom, time, your time plus your space plus your freedom. This is what's going to allow you to express yourself express yourself. You need that time. And in that time, and in that time, 
when you spend that time with yourselves, God, God is with you in that space and in that time. And in Jesus Christ is all freedom. So you, you, you have to allow yourself to feel all of this without judging yourself. And the next one is focus on the future. Focus. Like, like I said, they flood you with themselves, with themselves. It's all about their needs and their wants. And, 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 and they're like Veruca Salt. They want it all. They want the world. They want tomorrow. They want it all. And they want it now. No. This is about you now. You must focus on the future. So once you've had that opportunity to get in touch with yourself, with yourself and, and, and how you're feeling, you can start to focus and get a, a, a vision. It's all about the vision, ladies. It's all about the blueprint, as I have, I've, as, I've, as I have learned. It's all about the vision for where you want and need to go. You need, if you want to go somewhere, you need to have a map. You need to have a vision. You need to have a blueprint. And let me tell you, when I was when I was in the middle of the abuse, I thought it would never end because every day was a torture, it was torment. So I didn't know if it was going to come to an end soon or later. And so just because you're suffering now, it does not mean that you will you will suffer forever. But it's very important to get a a, a clear vision, a clear picture of what you want. You must. You must spend time with yourselves. It's so important. For me, it took a while because I was um, I, I, I was surrounded by family, but I was all alone, really. I mean, even if you're surrounded by friends and family, you feel like you're completely alone on the in, in this, completely alone. And then, of course, you're not even your own best friend because you, you're judging yourself so harshly and you're blaming yourself for everything. So I want to encourage you to just... Spend time with yourselves and with God. You will find, you will find that the answer is, is closer to you than, than you imagine, than you think. And accept it. If you have gone through it and you're still dealing with it, if you're ruminating on it or if you're going through it, accept what happened. But like I said, because I had begun to internalize it, do not internalize it because then if you, when you begin to internalize it, it begins to corrode you. Listen, it does begin to corrode you. So they have this, uh, narcissists are, are very skilled at, at making us believe that they're, everything that they're doing to us, everything bad that they're doing to us is our fault. Mm -hmm. They turn it around on us. They project everything onto us. Um, so rather than uh, internalizing, and I, I don't care if it's sexual or emotional abuse, Rather than internalizing it, accept it, but accept that it is not your fault. It is not your fault. And don't take on the narcissist baggage. You have enough. Each There was one man I met many, many, many years ago. And without me saying a word to him, it's like he could read me. This was somebody I had never met before, but he looked deep in my eyes and he said to me, let him go. This was way before I met the, the first narcissist. Um, he said to me, because let him go, he said to me, because you only, at the end of the day, only you carry your baggage. Only you carry yourself. Why should you be carrying someone else's baggage? And I'm saying the same thing to you, ladies. Do not carry the narcissist baggage. That's their baggage. You have enough of a cross to bear on your own. And you have God to help you bear it all the way because I can do all things through Christ the Lord who strengthens me, praise God. So get back in touch with things that make you feel good. This is so important, ladies, to get back in touch with the things that make you feel good. Creativity um, is so important important because this is one of the best ways to overcome all of that undermining abuse. One of the things the narcissists like to do in my experience, my abuser would like to, he would, he would, he would undermine my creativity, um, my creative tendencies. And, and he's not the only one I've met several people who do this. And I don't know why this is one thing that they enjoy undermining, really downplaying. I don't understand it. But the point is that whatever hobbies, pastimes, I, I, if you're a, a painter, if you are a gardener, if you are a jewelry maker, if you're a chef, a cook, whatever it is that you enjoy, a writer, uh, whatever it is that you enjoy, your hobbies and pastimes that make you feel good, go back to them. The chances are that you are multi-talented because 
most of the people that I've met who have gone through these nar- this narcissistic this narcissistic abuse are people who are very gifted. Um, and we all had gifts, praise God. God sent us to the earth with, with packaged with gifts, like I've said. But there are people... Th- th- the the people that I find that have, have been abused the most um, by narcissists tend to be people who are very talented. So by focusing on the things that we enjoy or the things that we do, we were great at, that we do well, is all about rebuilding our self-confidence, our self-worth, our self-esteem. So get in, get into it and get back in touch with, it's all about getting back in touch with yourselves with yourselves. And I praise God. I praise God um, for each and every one of you listening. Focus on those strengths. Focus on you, you, you. The narcissist is all about them, 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 them. Well, we got about, we got to be about God and about us. God is who is going to give you the freedom. He releases you from all of these chains, all of this bondage. Seek him. Seek our Lord. Wow. Let's continue. Let's continue. So for this reason, one of the first steps in recovering from any kind of abuse is seeing it clearly for what it is. Now, narcissists always come back. For the most part, they always come back. For the most part, they always come back. Now, I like something that our psychotherapist, Julie Kidd, said uh, that he... I think, wow, this is very clever, the way that she that she put it. So she says that she has this concept. She has this very useful concept that she she um, um, uses with people who are in a relationship with severe, severe narcissists. You must recognize that you are not the love of their lives. They, they, they have no such thing. We are simply supply. And we comprise fuel delivery systems that the narcissist has set up. Like I said, we are appliances. We're uh, like um, we're like that toothbrush or that, uh, to them, <laughs> to them we are. Uh, we're like that toothbrush, that uh, wash, washing machine, that dishwasher, all fuel, fuel delivery systems. Now the narcissist uses the fuel delivery systems to feed on their craving for control, for admiration, and for attention. So, when they come back and they use words like, I love you, I miss you, um, I can't stop thinking about you. or Okay, so according to Julia Kidd, and keep this, and this is another one for your tool belts, ladies. When a narcissist says, I love you, he or she means, I love the fuel you supply. When he or she says, I miss you, truly, they're saying, I miss you the fuel supply. It's all about the fuel, baby. I can't stop thinking about you equals I can't stop thinking about what you give me, right? And I can't wait to be with you really means I can't wait to get more of your fuel. Ooh, they're like Gollum. They look at my presence. They love the fuel. It's all about the fuel, 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 fuel. Ooh, this was a good one. Coming up next time on The Narcissist and Your Spirit, enmeshment. We're going to learn about what that is. We're going to touch on it, how narcissistic people use it to trap you. Also, please stay tuned next week for more on our Shulamite series in Spanish and English. And we're going to touch on the glorification of toxic relationships and entertainment and the bad boy archetype. All coming up on the Royal Bride Godmother next week. Ladies, if you haven't already done so, please share this podcast episode to help someone out spread the word. I'm Grace, your life coach, your spiritual godmother and motivator, reminding you, again, I'm currently offering those free life coaching services Mondays through Fridays on narcissistic abuse, mindset, faith, and empowerment. You can book that free 60-minute session with me all in the link below. Don't forget I'm offering free weekly conference calls Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Tuesdays for English, Wednesdays for Espanol. Subscribe to my monthly newsletter by joining my email list. There's more information for that in the description and you will also receive a free copy of 37 powerful affirmations to command your day. Also, the Goodly Iridescence group on Facebook was just, I just opened up that Goodly Iridescence group on Facebook um, 
I will be posting the first live video on Friday, May 28th at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. All links in the description for that episode. And also, I have it in Spanish, uh, Hermosa y Redicencia, for those who are Spanish-speaking. So don't forget to invite others. Also, in June, I'm launching a YouTube Live twice a month. There's more information for that in the description of this podcast. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me, for staying to the end. I praise God for each and every one of you. It's so amazing to have you all on board. I keep saying that, but I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm so excited because we're going to go, we're going to go into some places talking about all of these, all these things. And the Lord has so much to say about, about narcissistic abuse, truly, truly. When I, a personal, personal, little personal story here, when, I didn't, I never wanted to return to this ever again. I figured, you know, you go through something, you go through something, you heal from it. You don't ever want to think about it ever again. And uh, for a long time, I didn't think about it, but then the Lord drops it on you and he says, and now it's your turn to go and help others. You know, you know what it feels like. And ladies, if you've, if you've gone through it, you know that very few people truly understand, very few people understand it because most people, from what, I, from what I've discovered, is that most people think this is a normal thing. They think that maybe you're, I don't know, crazy. <laughs> But praise God, praise God for, um, for, for places like this, this platform and for places like YouTube where there are so many people who have suffered it, who have lived it, and praise God, who have survived it, and they are sounding the alarm. So let's be among them. I love you all. I keep you in my daily prayers. God is wonderful. God is, God is so, so good. He's so wonderful. Feel free, ladies, to drop me a voicemail. Please let me know. Is this podcast helping you? Has it blessed you? Has it helped you in your daily walk with the Lord? And feel free to drop any ideas that you have for any upcoming topics and for the show. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is dropping so many. This is like bombarding me with all these wonderful uh, topics that we can discuss. Uh, praying it helps someone out there. I appreciate all of you for your listening support. Uh, if you would like, to, if the Holy Spirit is is leading you. Only if he's leading you to support the production of more shows like tonight. Please support us with a small monthly contribution. You know, it's it's something that it, that uh, that's so important to spread the word of the Lord, to spread the hot coals, but only as the Spirit leads. Listen, we covered this in Ezekiel a few podcasts ago. It's all about following the Spirit. Never go before the Holy Ghost, ladies. Never go before the Holy Ghost. That's something I had to learn. And that's something Catherine Coleman also touched on when she said that a lot of people go before, they, they, they go before the Holy Ghost instead of following after him. And this is where we, we make a lot of mistakes in our Christian walk. So let's make sure that like those terrifying creatures in the book of Ezekiel, we are following the Spirit. And we are only being led by the Spirit. Praise God. Please return all of you beautiful, iridescent daughters of the King of the Lord to receive more truth, more wisdom, more hot coals, more knowledge, more understanding. And never forget, never forget that you have a mighty King on the throne of eternity who is watching you, who is so proud of you. Keep going. Keep the spirit is saying, keep moving forward, whatever, wherever it is. If you're in the pit right now, keep going, keep moving forward. Do not look back. This is not the time to look back. Keep pressing slow and steady. He says, keep pressing because your breakthrough is already here. Praise God. Praise God. And do not, do not heed the words of the enemy. And the enemy can come in many different shapes or forms. It can come in the way of your peers, just like it happened with the Lord Jesus when Peter spoke to him. Remember this. The enemy wants your anointing. The enemy wants to steal your anointing. He is jealous of your anointing. Protect it. Protect your baby. Protect 
your anointing ladies, all of you are iridescent and divine, the Spirit says, from the north, east, west, and south, wherever you're listening to, to me from. I pray that you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Jesus is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. Chase after him, chase after him only. He is wellness, he is the source and essence of everything, of reality itself. I love you all, ladies, and until next time, be safe out there. Prayers for you all. Shalom. Shalom.